also a well. On the first day Coraline's family moved in, Miss Spink and Miss Forcible made a point of telling Coraline how dangerous the well was, and warned her to be sure she kept away from it. So Coraline set off to explore for it, so that she knew where it was, to keep away from it properly. She found it on the third day, in an overgrown meadow beside the tennis court, behind a clump of trees, a low brick circle almost hidden in the high grass. The well had been covered up by wooden boards, to stop anyone falling in. There was a small knot hole in one of the boards, and Coraline spent an afternoon dropping pebbles and acorns through the hole, and waiting and counting until she heard the plop as they hit the water far below. Coraline also explored for animals. She found a hedgehog, and a snake skin, but no snake, and a rock that looked just like a frog, and a toad that looked just like a rock. There was also a haughty black cat who would sit on walls and tree stumps and watch her, but would slip away if ever she went over to try to play with it. That was how she spent her first two weeks in the house, exploring the garden and the grounds. Her mother made her come back inside for dinner and for lunch, and Caroline had to make sure she dressed up warm before she went out, for it was a very cold summer that year. But go out she did, exploring, every day until the day it rained, when Caroline had to stay inside. "'What should I do?' asked Caroline. "'Read a book,' said her mother. "'Watch a video. Play with your toys. Go on pester Miss Spink or Miss Forcible or the crazy old man upstairs.' "'No,' said Caroline. "'I don't want to do those things. "'I want to explore.' "'I don't really mind what you do,' said Caroline's mother, "'as long as you don't make a mess.' "'Caroline went over to the window "'and watched the rain come down. "'It wasn't the kind of rain you could go out in. "'It was the other kind, "'the kind that threw itself down from the sky "'and splashed where it landed. "'It was rain that meant business.' and currently its business was turning the garden into a muddy, wet soup. Caroline had watched all the videos. She was bored with her toys, and she'd read all her books. She turned on the television. She went from channel to channel to channel, but there was nothing on but men in suits talking about the stock market and talk shows. Eventually, she found something to watch. It was the last half of a natural history program about something called protective coloration. She watched animals, birds, and insects, which disguised themselves as leaves or twigs or other animals to escape from things that could hurt them. She enjoyed it, but it ended too soon, and was followed by a program about a cake factory. It was time to talk to her father. Caroline's father was home. Both of her parents worked, doing things on computers, which meant that they were home a lot of the time. Each of them had their own study. "'Hello, Caroline,' he said when she came in, without turning round. "Hm," said Caroline. "'It's raining.' "Yup," said her father. "'It's bucketing down.' "'No,' said Caroline. "'It's just raining.' "'Can I go outside?' "'What does your mother say?' "'She says you're not going out in weather like that, Caroline Jones.' "'Then, no.' But I want to carry on exploring. Then explore the flat, suggested her father. Look, here's a piece of paper and a pen. Count all the doors and windows. List everything blue. Mount an expedition to discover the hot water tank and leave me alone to work. Can I go into the drawing room? The drawing room was where the Joneses kept the expensive and uncomfortable furniture Caroline's grandmother had left them when she died. Caroline wasn't allowed in there. Nobody went in there. It was only for best. If you don't make a mess, and you don't touch anything. Caroline considered this carefully. Then she took the paper and pen, and went off to explore the inside of the flat. She discovered the hot water tank. It was in a cupboard in the kitchen. She counted everything blue, 153. She counted the windows, 21. She counted the doors. Fourteen. Of the doors that she found, thirteen 
opened and closed. The other, the big carved brown wooden door at the far corner of the drawing room, was locked. She said to her mother, "Where does that door go?" "Nowhere, dear." "It has to go somewhere." Her mother shook her head. "Look," she told Coraline. She reached up and took a string of keys from the top of the kitchen door frame. She sorted through them carefully and selected the oldest, biggest, blackest, rustiest key. They went into the drawing room. She unlocked the door with the key. The door swung open. Her mother was right. The door didn't go anywhere. It opened onto a brick wall. When this place was just one house, said Caroline's mother, that door went somewhere. When they turned the house into flats, they simply bricked it up. The other side is the empty flat on the other side of the house, the one that's still for sale. She shut the door. And put the string of keys back on top of the kitchen door frame. You didn't lock it," said Coraline. Her mother shrugged. "Why should I lock it?" she asked. "It doesn't go anywhere." Coraline didn't say anything. It was nearly dark outside now, and the rain was still coming down, pattering against the windows and blurring the lights of the cars in the street outside. Coraline's father stopped working. And made them all dinner. Caroline was disgusted. Daddy, she said, "You've made a recipe again. It's leek and potato stew with a tarragon garnish and melted Gruyere cheese." He admitted. Caroline sighed. Then she went to the freezer, and got out some microwave French fries and a microwave mini pizza. You know I don't like recipes, she told her father. While her dinner went around and around, and the little red numbers on the microwave oven counted down to zero. If you tried it, maybe you'd like it," said Caroline's father. But she shook her head. That night, Caroline lay awake in her bed. The rain had stopped, and she was almost asleep when something went. She sat up in bed. Something went. Creak. Caroline got out of bed and looked down the hall, but saw nothing strange. She walked down the hall. From her parents' bedroom came a low snoring, that was her father, and an occasional sleeping mutter, that was her mother. Caroline wondered if she'd dreamed it, whatever it was. Something moved. It was little more than a shadow. And it scuttled down the darkened hall fast, like a little patch of night. She hoped it wasn't a spider. Spiders made Caroline intensely uncomfortable. The black shape went into the drawing room, and Caroline followed it in, a little nervously. The room was dark. The only light came from the hall. And Caroline, who was standing in the doorway, cast a huge and distorted shadow onto the drawing room carpet. She looked like a thin giant woman. Caroline was just wondering whether or not she ought to turn on the lights, when she saw the black shape edge slowly out from beneath the sofa. It paused, and then dashed silently across the carpet toward the farthest corner of the room. There was no furniture. In that corner of the room, Caroline turned on the light. There was nothing in the corner, nothing but the old door that opened onto the brick wall. She was sure that her mother had shut the door, but now it was ever so slightly open. Just a crack. Caroline went over to it and looked in. There was nothing there, just a wall, built of red bricks. Caroline closed the old wooden door, turned out the light. And went to bed. She dreamed of black shapes that slid from place to place, avoiding the light, until they were all gathered together under the moon. Little black shapes with little red eyes and sharp yellow teeth. They started to sing. We are small, but we are many. We are many. We are small. 
We were here before you rose. We will be here when you fall. Their voices were high and whispering and slightly whiny. They made Coraline feel uncomfortable. And then Coraline dreamed a few commercials. And after that, she dreamed of nothing at all. And after that, she dreamed of nothing.